How's it going guys? Hope everyone's having a fine day. My name's Got Cake and welcome back once more to Star Wars Shavua. And today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Frederick 3. As always, if you enjoy this review, please do me the honours of hitting the like button. I'm working hard to provide some good game reviews and this lets me know that I'm on the right track. The channel is obviously in its infancy at the moment, but I'm doing my best to build it up and I can't do it without the viewer's support. So consider subscribing, it'd be much appreciated. So Frederick is a rhythm game with gameplay mechanics similar to other rhythm games such as Beat Mania, Guitar Hero and Demo. Now as you might have guessed, it is the third title in the Frederick game series and it sees you once again playing as protagonist Frederick Chopin. I haven't actually played the first two games but after playing this and enjoying it so much, I actually went and bought both of them and I'll get onto how you can currently get these discounted at the end of this video. So the opening game sequence sees Frederick driving away from the smouldering remains of a giant robot in a car reminiscent of the DeLorean from Back to the Future. It seems the robot isn't particularly happy about his defeat and dispatches the evil zeitgeist, a jellyfish looking robot, who catches up to Frederick, pulls him through a time pole and performs some Iron Man shit on his heart. My heart. We then cut to Germany, 1690, where the robot unveils its master plan to try and take Frederick's skills and talent. In order to do this, he finds the legendary composer and musician Johann Sebastian Bach and boosts him up a bit, transforming him into hyper Johann Sebastian Bach. And so begins the first battle of the game. Before we get into gameplay though, I'd like to start off by talking about the control scheme options of which the game has too. Firstly, you can choose to use a controller and this is something I'd really advise against unless it's something you're used to. The game is much more difficult to play and I found my fingers getting confused, especially when multiple note presses in a row are required. If you're opting to use a controller, then I'd suggest rebinding your buttons. In the options for the game, you'll find the bindings menu, where you can change the buttons which each piano key are bound to. I found that the default bindings didn't feel natural due to them being too close together. My advice is to use my bindings seen on screen now or something similar. I found having all black keys bound to the triggers and bumpers much better. The second control scheme is touchscreen. The game is much easier to play and it's really how the game was designed to be played. The only downside is that you'll only be able to play in handheld mode which is not really a problem unless like me you're trying to record some of your gameplay footage. There's currently no official way to record handheld mode footage via HDMI but hopefully it's something that Nintendo will implement in the future. Anyway let's get back to the game. So the game has two difficulty modes, normal and hard, with hard mode having additional notes and more complex combination of notes. Gameplay follows the same standard format as most rhythm games. Notes travel from the top of the screen down the strings towards the piano keys at the bottom. You then have to press the correct button or touch the correct key as each note moves over the keys in time with the music. Notes are coloured to aid you, with white notes indicating white piano keys and black notes indicating black piano keys. A bar at the top of the screen shows how well you're doing and acts as sort of a tug of war between you and your opponent. If you play well it fills from the left side with white and if you perform badly the white is pushed back and the bar fills from the right with red. If at the end of the song the bar is filled more than halfway with white then you win and you get to proceed on to the next level. If there's more than half a red bar then you lose and you have to play the stage again. There's also a point system based on how accurate you are with your button presses. Note accuracy is something I completely ignored when I first began playing and I didn't quite understand until I read the game's help menu. Something that's a little odd in this game is the developer's choice of colours to indicate note accuracy. Green is actually the worst colour you can get while red indicates perfect note accuracy. The perfect note accuracy zone is actually indicated on the keys by the black lines, but I thought I was playing badly at first after seeing the red accuracy indicators. There are several different note types I also neglected to learn about when I first started playing. Firstly, there are standard notes which require a single key press, and these make up the majority of the notes that you'll be playing. Next, there are notes which have a white trail behind them. These are notes that you have to hold the keys for until the white trail ends. And thirdly, there are blue notes with blue trails, which I initially thought were the whole notes, but actually require you to tap as fast as you can until the trail ends. There are also a couple of special notes which earn you extra points. The first are notes with an arrow, where you're required to drag the note if you're using touch controls, or press your analog stick in the direction indicated if you're using a controller. You do this after playing the note, but before you release it. And this is a totally optional mechanic which you can choose to ignore and just play the note normally if you're not bothered about the extra points. The second type of special notes are the double notes, which only appear when you're playing the game in touchscreen mode or with a dual controller grip, and they're the same as standard notes. The game also features a couple of additional game mechanics, such as one known only as the special action. 
Now from what I can tell, this is similar to Guitar Hero Star Power, and it requires you to build the purple bar seen on the left side of the screen. Once you've done this, the special action button will appear. Activating this will take you to sort of a mini game where you have to touch specific areas on the screen or press specific buttons before they disappear. If you fail as this, the game just goes on as normal with no penalty, but if you succeed, apparently it rewards you with an upper hand against your enemy. If I'm honest, I couldn't actually tell a difference, apart from the fact that your enemy just sods off and disappears from the screen for a while before returning. The second additional mechanic is the golden note, which is practically impossible to get due to the window for perfect notes being so small. I've only ever managed to get it at the start of Prokofiev's stage after several attempts. It awards you with 6,000 additional points and is not really worth it unless you're point chasing. As you progress through the game, you'll face off against many different legendary composers, such as Bach, Beethoven, Mozart and Vivaldi. Each stage features fantastic renditions of some of the most famous compositions. About halfway through a stage, the music usually transitions from one song to another. Backstage, for example, moves from Er on the G string to Toccata and Fugue in D minor, or as it's more commonly known, the Phantom of the Opera tune. Now I just want to say that I absolutely love the music in this game. Musician Michal Vasilevsky did a great job of injecting different genres of music into each classical composition while still retaining the overall feeling of the pieces. And there's some great variation throughout the game's nine stages. Another thing which can't go without mention is the game's graphics. There looks to have been a lot of effort put into them despite the fact that most players attention is going to be focused on the piano keys. The attention to detail is great in both the cutscene intermissions and in-game, with each stage's graphics themed around the composer's home country. So now we come to rating Frederick 3. Well since it's a rhythm game with standard rhythm game mechanics, there isn't a huge amount to write home about when it comes to gameplay. They are simple and work well. However, I'm under the strong belief that great music is what makes a great rhythm game, and this game has some great music. For a star rating, I'm giving the game 4 out of 5 stars. It's a solid rhythm game, and though the game feels a little short, with Frederick Free, it's a case of quality over quantity, and if you like rhythm games, you should definitely give it a go. I'd love to see additional songs released in future, so if the developers are listening, make it happen. You can pick it up on the Nintendo Wii Store now at a discounted price of £8.9p until the 4th of March. If you've played the game and are left wanting more like I was, why not pick up the first two games off the store as well? The individual price for each of them is £5.39 for the first game, Frederick Resurrection of Music, and £3.99 for Frederick 2 Evil Strikes Back. But you can get a discount of 50% to both games by buying Fear Effect Sedna, which just so happens to be on sale at the moment with 90% off. With the discount, this gives you all three games for £6.27. Compared with the cost of £9.38 for buying the two Frederick games separately, this is fantastic value for money. And with that, we come to the end of this SOS review of Frederick Free. If you played the game, let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. And if you played the first two, I'd also love to hear how you think it compares to them. I'm going to hopefully play through them over the next couple of days. As always, if you've enjoyed the review, give that like button a tickle. And if you're feeling particularly fruity, you can always subscribe to be notified of future videos. Once again, thanks very much for watching. And until next time, game on.